Hey there, I'm super excited to introduce you to Victoria Gibson in this next interview. No one more than Victoria has helped me become the businesswoman that I am today. I found Victoria a little more than a year ago when I was in a very difficult rut of creating course after course after course and I didn't know how to sell them. Victoria has been my mentor ever since and she has absolutely been my greatest partner and asset in getting my business to thrive. My success has been largely due to many of her techniques, her suggestions, and her coaching. So I'm thrilled to present her in an interview today to you to give you some insight into how her incredibly smart business mind works to help you in crafting an incredible sales funnel that will work for you. She has a lot of insight and it's heavy duty, so get ready and take notes. And maybe this is an interview that you watch a couple of times over because not only does she give you some technical expertise, she also gives you some really salient advice that I want you to heed. Every piece of advice that she has given me has always been a precious gem that I have followed to the T and it's always been magic. So I can't wait to introduce you to Victoria. Enjoy the interview. Hey, Victoria, and welcome, and thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I know that my yogis are going to benefit tremendously from your words of wisdom and what you have to offer. I know that I have over the past year plus in working with you. Um, so thanks again for, for your time today. It's really special. My, my pleasure. I'm excited to be here. It's, um, it's such a great opportunity now. There's no better time for... Um, people in your industry to really step up. You've got the tools, you've got the expertise. So yeah, now's your time. Absolutely. And I know that you're super sympathetic to the yoga teacher cause. Um, <laughs> and I know that you have watched me go from super broke and starving yoga teacher to thriving yoga teacher. And that's exactly what we're here to help uh, the yogis in the business academy do. So I want to start off by talking a little bit about sales funnels. Um, the yogis in the academy have worked on their sales funnel. We're actually using a bit of a different terminology. I call it a mountain because, of course, we like to go up um, as opposed to funnel down. But they know what it yeah. is. They understand how to get people focused in a, in a direction. But I want to hear from you since you're the expert. What do you feel like are the essential parts of a sales funnel? Okay. And in terms of obviously sales funnel, we, you know, it is implying, you know, the traditional, the mountains the same way, right? We're yeah. going from from bigger, touching more people to moving closer each time to that ideal person who's going to actually invest in us um, and make a purchase or start working with you in some way. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go really, really big. One of the, one of the best ways to sort of get, get things moving with the sales funnel is to have a really, really clear idea on who that ideal client really is so that we don't have to go far and wide in order to hope that some of them will convert. The more information you have from the beginning, the more targeted you can be from the beginning with who your ideal client is, the more successful you're going to be with, I'd like to call it more like a sales pathway or a pathway to, to someone investing with you where, you know, they it's like any kind of relationship right mm -hmm. you, um you know the old adage you know just walk uh, you know walk in and meet someone and then ask them straight on a date or to go to dinner or 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 more right you've got to kind of establish a relationship um and in this instance with um you know with the industry that you and your beautiful community are in mm -hmm. uh there's really a need to establish not only a relationship and a rapport with your audience or your potential clients, um, also the trust factor needs to be really big. So what can you be doing along the way from their first connection with you to moving towards them, them buying from you? And you might have some clients who just buy from you at the first connection, which would be fantastic as well. But right, obviously we all love people that. Take, <laughs> yeah, some people take a little bit more warming up. And that's also why we do some other things like video or Facebook Lives or webinars because it, even though it may be their first interaction with you, you're telling a story and you're creating that trust, credibility, authority that leads to people feeling comfortable and confident and inspired enough to invest with you. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're looking looking um, for as an essential with 
marketing in any industry really but particularly this one i think establishing the trust and the credibility is important yeah. um and the value right like giving that value up front because that also establishes reciprocity and and there's it's just human nature that when people receive something of value they feel like they do want to give back and often that is in terms of either following you advocating for you supporting you or investing in your services or packages or coaching or whatever it might be so they'd be my my elements definitely establish trust give value um you know keep keep a perception of authority as well authority and credibility on your topic mm -hmm. um be quite specific about what value you provide too because that can allow people to make a decision about you a lot quicker than your competition if uh, for example you just do kundalini yoga right and that's all you talk about then you need to make sure that all the touch points across social media are it's clear that you just talk about kundalini or if you do uh, you know strength yoga or whatever and and then that's that's all the touch points need to be about that so right. I think that's important too having a, a, a being specific if you can, which is actually the hardest thing to do. Yeah. But if you can do that, I think it, that makes a big difference. You know, we talk about that in the very first module in the Business Academy, niching down, essentially. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah. it, it brings up so much fear for people. Um, and I'm yeah. sure that that's probably not industry specific to us. I'm sure that you run into that with clients all over the place. I know you ran into yeah. it with me. Um, yes. What do you think it is that makes people so scared of niching down and focusing like that? Because it does actually create better sales. It absolutely does, without a shadow of a doubt. It allows you to reach expert status a lot quicker than if you don't. Yeah. Um, but I think there's, there's a couple of layers there. One is good old FOMO, fear of missing out. Yeah. Um, fear you generally when you go when you're at the stage where you need to niche and maybe you're just straight out of the gate or you've been doing it for a while has a, things haven't worked so well for you mm -hmm. so you feel like well no one's buying now how am i going to get more people buying when i narrow in right right, like, right. so it, it's absolutely fear um the second is um confidence Confidence that you can be seen as an expert in a specific area um, definitely challenges a lot of people because they feel like, oh, but <clears throat> I'm not the I'm not the best at uh, you know Yin yoga. It's not I like. There's lots of other people out there who teach Yin. Yoga. Like so, how? What if I just did that? But there's all these other people who know more than me, and so I'm going to go narrow, and I'm not the expert, and they're not feeling confident to own that. Um, but all you know you don't have to wait for permission to be an expert you just have to share all those things I talked about before the value credibility authority in what you know sure you're not saying you're the best you're better than everyone you're just saying I've got something to offer here and if it connects if, if it you know rings your bell and you connect with it then great but if you don't that's fine there's plenty of yeah. other people to, to to connect with but if you can be the one stepping up because so many people don't want to right you can easily be seen as the preeminent expert without being the preeminent expert <laughs> just by consistently sharing a very specific message of value. So yeah. the opportunity is there. Um, it's just that's why working with a coach like them working with you is so important because how many times would you talk yourself out of it? You just say, well, I can't do that. So I'll just do a little bit here and a little bit here and I'll talk about yin and then I'll talk about um, you know, a yenga or I'm, I, I'm not a yoga expert. So you're doing pretty me, good. Like, but... It's like, you know, you, you, so everyone's like, well, I'll talk about yin and then I'll talk about, um, what's the main one? I always do. I can't think but but uh, Vinyasa. Vinyasa. Yeah. I was like, that, that is kind of <laughs> yoga, Vinyasa yoga, whatever. I don't know. It's probably not even how you refer to it, but you know, like we'll talk about all those elements, but imagine when you're specific when you um when people when the other yoga if you were targeting yoga teachers for example or um a general audience yoga of yoga um people who practice yoga and are obsessive about yoga and they want to really hone their yin practice wouldn't it make more sense if you did specialize in yin if that was the thing that you always all your yin classes were always booked out all um you know people always asking about about them raving about them they're, they're what you get the most feedback about wouldn't that make more sense to then say okay i could get pulled over here and there's there's so many nuances and intricacies and things to share in just that one specific 
a specific part of yoga. So Absolutely. I think it gives the audience a lot more value. It allows you to create a marketing brand or, or a marketing message and, and then a brand a lot faster and easier than, you know, talking about everything. So it's the fastest path to success. Absolutely. Absolutely. So my next question is, is maybe you answered it already, is what makes a good sales funnel? I mean, because people can put together the parts, right? Like they can do a Facebook Live, they can create a course, they can write the emails, but what's going to make all of those pieces and parts actually work together to, to get people to convert? Yeah. Well, definitely that message to market is critical. Great um, copywriting or brilliant presence on video. Everything needs to be masterfully created. And it sounds a bit intimidating, (laughs) but the best way to do this, because it's unlikely you're going to put together a sales funnel and out of the gate it's going to work well. Like I'm not saying, right, do a sales funnel and it's going to work really well. Look, it's going to work better than no sales funnel. Yeah. Absolutely. But especially if you're going to invest um, money into it with um, traffic, uh, online traffic, uh, whether that be Facebook, or Google, or Pinterest, or whatever, whatever you decide, or maybe you're taking some ads in some yoga publications, or maybe uh, someone else has a, a, a really big uh, list of people, or email list, or presence that you could be featured with. Whatever it might be, you want to be thinking: Well, what am I going to offer? What's that first? What's that next step that people are going to make once they see have that first contact with me? So I think iteration is the most important part of a good sales funnel, which is going down each thing. Hang on, where are people dropping off? What's what piece is working and what's not? Mm-hmm. And that does take time to shape. But like I often say, it's like that clay on the pottery wheel. Like we've got the clay, right? So right. that's the sales funnel. But we haven't got the pot until we start shaping, moving. Okay, hang on, that's not even. This doesn't work. Um, it's really taking that time. Most people don't do that. Yeah. Um, also, most people are really hesitant or don't have the knowledge or support to do this um, to even create a sales funnel. People get really intimidated by it. But to be honest, a sales funnel can be as easy as I want a piece of value to, um, to share. So it might be you get on video, say you're not that web savvy, right? Like you, you're not great at creating a beautiful website and homepage. Yeah, you need a presence on the web. There's plenty of people who've made a huge impact just using social media. Right. So even, here's a simple one, without all your fancy bells and whistles that you could be doing, um, you could be offering a download on your, Facebook's easier to do this too because you can embed links a lot easier. You can still do it on Insta, um, but, uh, and actually, there is a good way to do it on Insta. I'll talk about one one that's an easy Facebook, one that's an easy Insta, because I'm sure most of your students or people watching this would yeah. would have a Facebook page. This isn't on your Facebook personal profile that you friend people on. It's on the one that people like you on. Um, so Facebook page, you could have a free uh, video, a free yoga video, like a 15 minute morning ritual, right? That you want to give away. It's a freebie, right? right? So why we give away our training as a freebie? We'll get people get to experience what our teaching styles like. Say, say if this is what you were teaching, right? Like people might be doing other things, but they get a sense of us, build relationship, credibility, authority, because they're like, wow, I did that fifteen minute yoga, uh, that ritual. Yeah, life. and I loved it. I loved their teaching, and I loved what they had to offer, and such great value. Yeah, yeah. Right. So there's that video. Okay, so. You get on Facebook, maybe do a Facebook Live because the beautiful thing with that is that you're borrowing Facebook's broadcasting tools and that you don't need a, need, need a list. All you need is people to have liked your page and Facebook are going to pop up on them. I'm going to get a message on my phone if I follow you and it's going to go bing. You know, um, Alana's gone live, which I do get those, which is great. Oh, great. Okay, I want to see what Alana's got to say today. Come on and you, you're like, great, you know what, I just – honed I've zeroed in on the best 15 minutes you can spend each day to you know center yourself ground yourself and really anchor your practice so I've created a video for you all you have to do is jump below I pop the link in um in the comments jump below and go and claim it right or and maybe you just put put that up on on a on something I know it's still getting a bit techy because you do have to put the video up somewhere but you could have it as a YouTube unlist uh yeah unlist it yep unlisted right yep. so it's still not something that's on your channel so when you go to do your normal youtube guess what you can do all this on your phone by the way so 
set that up, a little basic little tripod in the corner, pop your mat out, do that 15 minutes, talk to people, unlisted YouTube video. Facebook Live to unlisted YouTube video, sure. We'd like to have an opt-in and all that jazz, but I'm just saying basic straight out the right. gate. Um, give them some value and then what are they going to be thinking next time there's a live or a Facebook live, I'm going to come back or I'm going to be paying attention to what's on the page because Facebook will also realize that you're paying attention and they will show more of your Facebook page posts. So there's a really simple way. It's not like the best way because I find with sales funnels, they can get super complicated. Yeah, but it's I know not to people overwhelm been, people too. Yeah, but I know that obviously your, um, your people have been um, doing, you know, working through this for a few months now. So you're not like at the beginning, beginning stages. Right. So when you want to take that up another level, say with the Instagram one I was going, I was going to talk about. So how can you create... Um, you know, a great opt-in page and a freebie that you can send people to that's got a, either a video, a checklist, a download, uh, some other email follow-up series, a challenge, um, a planner, I think I said templates or whatever, that maybe they're just something that really solves a problem in your market. So we want to go to that initial layer of, okay, what are, what are they dealing with? What's their pain point? What's the challenges they're facing and how can we solve that for them? Right. So once we Definitely. first do that, we go, okay, great. We know now we go and create the opt-in so they get an opt-in and they get whatever it is delivered and then we have them on our email list. Um, so if we already want to reach more people like that, because um, once we have the email, obviously we can keep following up with them and then that's our own asset, our own marketing asset and we're not relying just on social media profiles. Um, but say if you have done a great job, this is doing a really good job on your Instagram, if you have more than 10,000 uh, followers on Instagram, you can actually use Instagram stories and you can add a link per story. They swipe down and they can access their link. So that could be something like, you know, you've got the little templates or something. Hey, I do a quick story on, I've got this new book, you know, do you want, do you want to find the, you know, the five top um, struggles that your students have in yoga and how to overcome them, right? Great swipe up to grab it and then they go through on their phone I mean everything nowadays is pretty pretty much done on people's right. phones so you want to make sure it's optimized for mobile use you're gonna reach a lot more people that way so um, then we go okay great they've got that piece don't forget like a simple funnel is you could just do that and still be okay right you're yeah. building an audience you're delivering some value then when you want to get more sophisticated it's like right okay I've got them there how could I keep Hey, how did you go with that? And and there's technology to allow you to have all that automated, which obviously Alana does beautifully as well and can show you how to do. So it's like, okay, follow up with email, follow up with ads um, on Facebook. We know who those people are who have opted in. We'll go and talk to them on Facebook because you can just create some ads that go just to those people. Um, so it's, it's moving them forward each time. Could we invite them to a free live workshop or could we invite them to a free webinar where you could do it online? That would probably be my next advice is like go a little bit deeper with them, spend some more time with them. Right. Then, you know, depending on, I mean, if you've just got a $47 ebook or a book or a guide or something, then you probably don't need as many touch points, right? right. You could probably sell to them with a couple of touch points or just one. So. Everything's very specific. That's why, unfortunately, I mean, I loved, I'd make a ton more money if I had one templated <laughs> business house funnel. You do this and it works. Trust me, it'll tip in thousands of dollars into your bank account every week. Right. I wish I had that. I don't because every kind of case is different, but we base it on those those foundations that I've shared. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I love all of that. And, you know, you, you kind of led me into my next piece, which is how, how do you know when you're ready to start paying for advertising? Because that is a huge way to actually begin to reach a larger market once you have a funnel in place, once you have all of the touch points in place, once you have the automation in place. You know, at some point, you can't just rely on organic traffic. So, sure. And do you know what? My my opinion is, you can be paying for them straight out of the gate with mm -hmm. a, with something like I said, just going in Facebook Lives yeah. and, or boosting those posts, get, trying to get them to more people because. When you start out with your own Facebook page or your own, because you can do this, this all applies on Instagram too, yeah. right? And Instagram's great for your community as well. Um, in that, yeah, it's great to say, okay, well, I'm on Instagram. Great. Well, we've got no followers or how are we, how are we reaching more people? We've mm -hmm. got to be pushing that all the time. So in conjunction with an organic 
you know, growing your social media following, which would definitely be advice for my, you know, first step. So get on, search your hashtags on Insta, comment on other people's things, follow them, follow them. They generally will follow you back. Um, all those kind of things, start building that up. Um, but what I would, so you may just use paid traffic to start reaching more people to like what you're doing. It's right. not the best use of your money, but you could do that straight out of the gate. Um, you might already be finding, great, I've got a really huge social media following. This I find is very common, particularly in this space. You might already have a great social media following, but you're not monetizing it, okay? So if you're not monetizing it and you've got some people there, you're in the best possible position to start investing in traffic. And that's kind of, that's kind of where you were, yeah. Alana. I, you had some amazing online trainings. Um, you had great following. You were giving such amazing value. And you yogis are really great at doing this. Like not we're great at giving people. ourselves yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, and that was you were a perfect example of that. Yeah. So I'm like, great. This is a no-brainer for you to invest in traffic because you've got or you've got the foundation there, right, to scale up. So I'm not suggesting if you don't have that foundation, hey, you know, chuck a thousand bucks a day in it. No. You, you want to be get, seeing a return, but also don't forget that if you were going to set up your own yoga studio, there'd be some costs, yeah, right? Definitely. Without a return from the outset, you'd have to do a fit out, you'd have to have your rent, you'd have to maybe do some flyers and some printing, some letterbox drops. There's always investment in a business. So I always find it quite funny that, not funny, but like kind of, I, I like to challenge people on this where they're like, oh, well, you know, I don't want to spend the money on it. Um, it's kind of like, well, this is a business, right? Yeah. You've got like, in what world, or what other business could you set up and start making money without spending any money? Exactly. Like we're so lucky to have the power of social media that you can actually do that. But yeah. really what you're going to start grizzling if you have to spend 10 bucks a day on some Facebook ads, um, you know, I, I just feel like you can basically to answer your question long-winded answer but to answer your question i think you can pay for ads straight out of the gate right. but find out what you're doing and alana i'm sure you can share more with them on that but um yeah i think everyone's ready to go once they understand what their message to market is because there's not much point in paying for people to come to you if you're not clear on what what you what value you want to provide can you quickly define message to market for us yeah so message to market is really understanding how to um, connect with your ideal people that you can offer value to. So how to basically speak their language so they're naturally drawn to you and will naturally invest with you. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is to address their fears, challenges, problems, um, and provide a clear solution. Right. So yeah, awesome. Definitely. Yeah. So when you get that nailed in, then Facebook advertising or Instagram advertising is an awesome next step. Um, and yeah. you know, I can hear like I can hear the objections now from my audience going, "But I don't have the money. But I can't." You know, what do you like? How do you? How do you? And I, I totally understand. Of course, when you're building a business, you have to put money forth. But like, what do you say to people when they're like saying, oh, "I don't have the money," which I know you heard from me plenty of times oh, as well. Oh yeah, I get that from lots of people. Yeah. Um, and really, it's it's like, well, can you afford not to invest in your business? Yeah. You're not making money now. You want to make money, so yeah. can you afford not to? Right. right. But that's not available for everyone, right? You might have bad credit. You can't uh, access. You know, you don't have a, a you not you don't have a trust fund. Unfortunately, <laughs> neither do I. I wish I did. Right. <laughs> um, my plans on getting a rich husband to fund everything <laughs> yeah, haven't worked out either. Right. Whoops. So look, I'm down to me. Right. Um, and look. It, you do need to have access to some savings to do that to do this, right? Yeah. So if you don't, then I wouldn't get into debt for it. I'm not saying that it's not worth getting into debt to invest in your business. Yeah. But if okay. you're not clear enough first on the foundations, that might not be a great play for you. So here's some other ideas. Why don't you go down to Lululemon? I know it's a well worn path, but be like, can I do a class on Yin Yoga? To your people right go borrow from other people so you're not having to pay for a list right. you're piggybacking off what they've done so yoga is brilliant because there's always a lululemon yeah sure there's other yoga teachers doing stuff but guess what they put on a free class guess what people come and guess what you can deliver value live doesn't right. cost you anything. Right. You get a free yoga outfit at the end of it. Well, you do in Australia. I don't and know. Make if that sure happens. you get everybody's email lists. 
Yeah, yeah, right. Like you yeah. just go, hey, I just want you to register here, you know. Um, or also, I've got a, I've got another event or a retreat coming up soon. I want you to just make sure pop your name down so you can follow up with them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. You can even be like, oh, hey, um, you know, um, I've got, I'm just collecting. So I don't know. You can just get their mobile numbers even and text them. Right? Yeah. Um, so. Because if you ask them, very few people are going to be like, oh, no, you know, if you just go up like it's a process, oh, can you just register for the class and put your uh, phone number and email there? Imagine they spend 45 minutes to an hour with you or an hour and a half, I don't know how long everyone teaches, but, you know, that doesn't cost you anything but your time. So where can you show up like that? Have you seen some other people who are further ahead from you, ahead of you in the field that do a podcast? Mm-hmm. Can you mm-hmm. write an email and submit to do a, a to be a guest on a podcast or to give a free uh, or to provide a guest blog on their website? Like Mind Body Green's great, Huffington Post is great, uh, you know, Yoga Journal, etc. They're all big traffic sites that need content, right? right? Yeah. So what could you what could you um, deliver there to piggyback off other people's audiences? Right. So. If money's tight, great. Don't do the paid ads first. Do the other stuff. But what I find is most people are not even prepared to do that. So it's like don't sit there and moan about I can't get traffic. Go and do all you can to get some to <laughs> begin with. Then, then do some sales. Like make some sales. Do some private teaching. Do some um, phone calls. You don't have to create an online program straight out the gate. Like right. That takes time and money as well, investing in tech. Go old school. I am a big fan of analog. Most of my clients I work with, it's it yeah sure we're using Skype right like you're my client you're in New York I'm in Melbourne Australia but I'm we're digging into your stuff like micro style right um not I haven't got some online no touch program where you know I'm I'm asleep and the sales are ringing in there's some elements of my business that can be like that when I when I offer those programs but I definitely haven't got that dialed in um and this is an easy model to start like a coaching business is an easy model to start out of the gate and you don't need a ton of money to set it up and you can make some really great money yeah so just just yeah focus on getting results with people even bit by bit borrow other people's audiences there's a lot of hacks around uh, if you don't have money. You have yourself and you have your expertise. Absolutely. And you don't have to necessarily just be teaching classes to get the money. It's going to take a lot of, you know, 50 to $100 to come in to invest in what you need. You could never teach enough yoga classes a week to make the money that you need. No, no, no especially living in somewhere like New York City, right? Yeah. So You're living anywhere, really. I mean, you, you have to be yeah. like living in your living somewhere completely rent free in order to even come close. But I don't recommend it. And you know, I love that you offered some free ways to build your audience and to get things going and to get your sales funnel going. Um, I know for myself that my business. It transformed when I started doing Facebook ads. I mean, truly, like I did as many free things as I could, but it wasn't until I started actually investing that my business grew and flourished. So, um, you know, when people are ready for that, and even even starting at the level of ten dollars a day, or you know, mm-hmm. just a, on a little bit of level, just to get themselves in it, what is the best way for them to start advertising on Facebook? Yeah, once again, it's kind of how long is a piece of string, and it and it, one size doesn't necessarily fit all. Sure. Uh, it used to be very easy a few years ago when there was less competition, but in this mar- in, in your market, there, there's still some great opportunity there. Um, the easiest way I would suggest start at ten to twenty dollars a day. Start running ads to um, either a video, that, even just a live video that you do. You don't have to be; it doesn't have to be a fancy video. Start creating audiences. Um, create a guide, ch- checklist, template. That thing I mentioned before. So, like what we call an opt-in freebie. So, running an ad to an opt-in freebie so that you can be building your email list is a great strategy. That's really where I'd advise most people to start. Yeah. Um, making sure that your ad is kind of engaging it is all about that message in the, the first bit of the ad. If it's going to look more like someone's feed, like it's a post from a friend, it's talking straight directly to them, um, and it provides a bit of interest or intrigue and definitely a call to action to click through and do do the thing that you yeah. want them to do. Yeah, That's it can't important. be passive. Like, oh, I hope that you try this out. Yeah, yeah. Like, you've got to be direct because yeah. people, you've got, this is the age of no attention. Nobody's got attention. You've got to grab them, right? So right. it doesn't mean you can't have a longer post, but that headline has to grab them. Um, we have to talk directly to them. We have to have a, a, 
a great image that gets their attention too. But um, I would suggest, yeah, sending something to an, an email opt-in is the best, still the best strategy to start building your list and growing your audience. Yeah, that's great. And and through this business course, they, they've already gotten kind of the setup so that when somebody does opt-in, they're going to get a nurture sequence and they're going to get some follow-up already. So they're getting multiple touches from, uh, from you and um, you know, building that no like and trust factor, which is great. So I love that. Um, and you have some resources for Facebook ads, right? Uh, yeah, basically, if, they, if you come on my site, I mean, a lot of the stuff I do with little videos and hacks are on there and they're up to date on victoriagibson.com. So you head along there and in, in the blogs, I have that. Um, but yeah, so it's free, free, come along. And then I've got I've got um, blog posts and things like that on there. So they can definitely jump in there um, and get sort of, uh, yeah, some great kind of tips and and what's going on. I'll also give you a link, uh, Alana, you might want to include in the site uh, for just, you know, a basic kind of ads cheat sheet, the things that you need to know as well. So you can give, uh, give everyone access to that too. Okay, awesome. And my last question for you, Victoria, is what is your best advice? for someone who is ready to grow their business and scale up? Um, I think know your numbers, Um, absolutely. So know at every touch point what return you're getting and how you could improve upon that. So if things, if it it works out, okay, great. I know that for every um, email subscriber, it costs me $2 per subscriber. And it yields me in a year, on average, every subscriber on my list yields me $160. Then what I know all day long is that I can spend, you know, I I mean, I would say you could spend up to $40, right? If everything was purely passive, if you had to invest some more customized time, it wouldn't be that high because you've got to value your time as well. But then you you have the the stats to know what you can invest to scale up. Because if we scale up without the metrics, that's where we start to get in trouble because you might be tipping a lot more money in than you can be justifying. And so really tracking those details and knowing your metrics is absolutely critical in to my mind. Um, so yeah, that's what I make sure you have before you before you think about scaling up. And making sure also that you're doing really well with what you've got. So maybe, okay, have I exhausted all the opportunities with my current offer or mm-hmm. with my current audience? Maybe I, d- I don't need to spend money growing my audience because I, I've only got, you know, 1% of my current subscribers buying from me. So what can I do to get my more of my existing audience to buy before we go to go, okay, well, we're going to go bigger and we're going to reach more people. Have you exhausted all the opportunities that sit in front of you? You know, I actually have one more question for you because I think it's really important. I can, you know, and again, this is, this comes from a place I was here in this place where when people weren't buying rather than looking at the numbers, um, my strategy was to just make more stuff. My strategy was to make another course. Well, if they're not buying this course, let me, just, let me just make another one. Or if they're not opting into this freebie, let me just make another one. Or, you know, if this funnel isn't working, let me just make another one. What do you yeah. suggest for someone whose panic sends them into like, oh my God, I just need to make more stuff and then they'll buy something else. What I suggest is stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't do uh, that. <laughs> also, understand the reasons why. That's what I was saying about understanding your metrics, right? Yeah. It, because you can't judge whether that truly is missing the mark unless, and maybe the metrics may not show you, you might have to send a quick survey to your audience. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm creating the best possible content for you. Out of these three topics, what's of most interest? And do you still want to hear more about X, right? So maybe you are off the mark. Um, I had this actually the other day with um, one of my clients and she came to me, she had this excellent, like we talk about nailing a message to market. I think this was definitely nailing a message to market, but she'd done a course and I'll tell you what it is in a sec, but she'd done, she'd created an online program and only sold a handful of 47 or $97 online programs. And she was so battle scarred by it because it knocked her confidence, right? You put all your heart and soul into creating this thing and no one buys it. Yeah. It's, necessarily the program's fault it's the marketing's fault right it is you know the sales funnel it is um it might be a copywriting sucks because it's not good to be it's not easy to be a a great direct response copywriter so writing for online 
audiences is not the same as writing your, you know, dissertation or a thesis or for corporate or, you know, it's, it's, it's a definitely different style. Um, and often I see most people let themselves down with that sort of copy, but regardless, it's like, okay, so you sold four and then one person wanted a refund. And so of course, <laughs> extra cut up, right? God, like, I've been there. Be, <laughs> it's it heartbreaking. It's terrible. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to ever, t I don't want to do that because I, I did, already did a program and nobody bought, well, hang on, let's just break this down a bit. Okay. Well, the price probably wasn't valuing the impact and you did one launch, right? That's all that happened, right? That's fine. Most people's first launch sucks. Yeah. But because we're so sensitive to that, we've poured it all in and people didn't like it. Oh, right. <laughs> that we don't, we don't shape it. It's that pottery on the wheel again. Hang yeah. on a minute. What didn't work? Because her offer was, um, it was fertility mindset coaching. So as a woman who'd been through IVF um, and eventually had two, two babies with it, she knew the torture of this two week wait every time you go to get pregnant, like you've got your yeah. one opportunity and then like it's it's a payment. So if we're talking about message to market and solving someone's problem, that's a huge problem out well, there. Well, and it's also, I love it because it's also so niche. Like she's exactly. really niched down and she's really solving a pain point for people. That's brilliant. Yeah. So of course, exactly, right? Yeah. But do you know what she wanted to do? Go coach um, health and wellness uh, professionals and help them or not coach them do like their websites and help them do some branding and stuff and I'm no, like no no <laughs> we pay one, one and two of those a month she only yeah. wants to earn five thousand dollars a month and I'm like hey guess what best message to market I want you to go to fertility and of course what happened she's like going to me ever with every ounce of her body I don't want to do it yeah. I don't want to do it and then this is also the beautiful thing about charging more, right? Is that she had to invest, you know, four grand to work with me, right? So she, she better listen to me. Yeah. Be pretty stupid to spend four thousand dollars on my advice and not listen to me, wouldn't it? So she said the struggle of like, I don't want to do it, and I can tell it, I can hear it, I can see it, and she does not want to do it, right? And I'm like, we have got to do it. It's it's brilliant. You've yeah. got you you've got the story. You've got the credibility because I'm not in the in the business of advising people to go against their expertise, right? She's got the expertise. She can help it. She's got a great personality for it. She's super pumped, vibrant. Um, you know, has been there but come out the other side. So she gets it. Um, so we we worked on that, and her program became a. I think at full price it's going to be a 997, but she started selling some launch, you know, launch round early access at 497. She sold 10. Yeah, of those. good for her. So she sold four $47 ones before and one refunded, which like cut her the most. She'd made $150 versus making 5,000. That's awesome. Just same content. She didn't. She, didn't actually change what her what that product was. So imagine if she hadn't have cut. I'm not taking all credit for it, but imagine if she. It's a collaboration for sure. She had to step up and face her resistance on this yeah. one. I couldn't do it for her, but imagine if she kept going. She was going to go and do everyone's websites and bits and pieces and ones and twos and like this way she can start a movement. So on Instagram, um, it, you can look for the hashtag. It's Fertility Warrior. Oh, right? wow, that's awesome. It's really cool. Like, it's a, that's a movement. That's yeah. touching people's lives. That's making a massive difference. And no, you don't, maybe not everybody has to make a massive difference, but in, in their own way are making a massive difference. And I think that's where it's so easy, you know, to fall into this, oh, I'll just create an online course and everything yeah. will be fine. Well, it won't be. There will always be things that don't work. <laughs> And it always takes time and it's a bitch, right? You yeah, you have to work out all the little pieces and, and you have to keep at it. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop for anybody. But um, compared to the grind of, you know, trading um, dollars for hours and, and earning very little, yeah. it's worth the effort. Um, but keep in balance too. Like I see a lot of people and I've been guilty of this myself and I know you have to, Alana, in that... You know, we want to give so much to it that things get out of whack and we put too much time and effort into it that it becomes a much bigger slog than just teaching a few yoga classes, right? Yeah. <laughs> so keep it in balance. Everything, 
it's there's you're never going to get to the bottom of your to-do list and when you're working work and when you're not working don't right just leave it it's still going to be there mm -hmm. yes you might be able to sprint but at what cost mm -hmm. um so I'm not I'm not here to you know sell this. Hey, laptop lifestyle. I'm just gonna take my laptop down the beach and woo. You know I'm having a great old time. This is hard, but it's worth it. Yeah. Um, but you've got to know your metrics. You can't give up and iterate, iterate, iterate before you give up. I think is um, the biggest thing I'd like to leave. It's a great takeaway because it's so true, and I love that. So thank you very much, Victoria. I so appreciate pleasure. your time. <laughs> Absolutely. My pleasure. Anytime. So, um, um, no, it's been great. Yeah. Love and I know that my people are going to take, say that again. <laughs> Sorry. Love to riff on things like this. I can go for hours. So oh, yeah, I know. you got to wrap me up. Wrap me up. Well, I mean, what's great. I mean, I love the story that you shared at the end because it's so relevant to, to my yogis. They are going to need to niche down, you know, and that story, I hope imparts a sense of like bravery that they can really do this, that, finding their niche and going for it is so important and to not give up and to make sure that that one funnel that they have is killing it before they do anything else. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's always, and one, one that did make me think of another one that's probably relevant to this audience um, where I had a woman who, uh, she, was kind of, she wasn't a doula. She was, she did Ayurvedic um and looking after newborn mothers, right? So she did all these Ayurvedic cooking and recipes and stuff and like it had this whole kind of holistic plan to nurture newborn mothers because oh, cool. her thought was this sort of fourth trimester um, yeah. is the most important in setting everyone up. And her bigger why, in fact, this is a bit of a Debbie Downer, but the bigger why is that um, there's a really high rate of um, newborn mother, suicide amongst newborn mothers, which is kind of all kept under hush-hush and but it's a bit, like, it's obviously huge. And so she she had this real why to, to be combating that. Yeah. And she'd done, she had obviously the knowledge of how to go into newborn, into these homes with newborn mothers, like, work as a, you know, someone to come and give support and set them up and through that, that real struggle stage at the beginning. Um, but she wanted to scale and leverage right so there's always this is another point there's always a different way of thinking about how to do it so what did i said to her um instead of these 97 dollars sleep courses you're trying to sell online that no one's really buying um because newborn mothers ain't got time to watch the videos to do it right you know all those sort of things i said your big why is about helping these newborn mothers why don't you help the people who help the newborn mothers show them your approach so the ones who are already going into homes you don't have to but you could educate them so we we're able to do that and she made in her first five months she 10x her income from what she'd done all the year before so awesome. there's different ways of thinking about how to do it so yeah. i want to give a couple of relevant examples there um because i think that that's worth thinking about as well yeah definitely so. i love that Victoria, again, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Well, and, pleasure. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for the OUs to check this out. You've dropped some awesome wisdom for us, and uh, thank you. Excellent. My pleasure.